Hi, my name is Alicia Kleinert, and I'm from the Crop Development Division at the ARC Infratech Nature Bay. Today, I'm going to give feedback on a new project that started in April this year. In this project, we will be comparing the performance of a range of rootstocks from tissue culture to those derived from traditional layer beds. The growth and performance will be tracked over time and compared to determine whether rootstocks obtained from tissue culture justify the bigger initial investment by leading to long-term potential savings. Currently, consensus is lacking in the industry regarding the performance of these tissue culture rootstock compared to traditional liners. The traditional method of rootstock propagation is a relatively slow and time-consuming process. In recent years, protocols have been developed for woody species that are difficult to propagate in vitro. Tissue culture allows for rapid reproduction of genetically identical, disease-free material in especially large numbers. The Joint Apple Rootstock Breeding and Evaluation Program between Cornell University and the United States Department of Agriculture develops new rootstocks with an emphasis on productivity and resilience. Seven rootstock cultivars have been selected for this study, of which M7 and M9 will serve as controls. The growth control of the rootstocks range from dwarfing, such as M9, to semi-dwarfing, to vigorous, such as CG778. All the CG rootstocks selected for the study have high woolly apple aphid resistance, fire blight resistance, and are phytophthora tolerant, and are not susceptible to latent viruses. Approximately seven replicates of each cultivar from either the tissue culture or the layer beds will be budded with lady in red and grown in bags in the nursery until they are ready for planting out in the following year. Once ready, these approximately 100 trees will then be planted into a portion of a commercial orchard of lady in red at Oak Valley. This will allow us to directly compare their performance while at the same time excluding possible soil and microclimatic influences. Experimental trees will be treated in exactly the same way as the rest of the orchard in terms of the spraying program followed, as well as pruning practices. At the time of planting, I will measure the number, the length and the cross-sectional area of all branches per tree, and this will be done in subsequent visits to the orchard, which I'm planning on doing every six to eight weeks. The influence of the different rootstocks on the growth and performance of the cyan cultivar will be tracked and compared over two consecutive growing seasons. Furthermore, any visible differences between the trees will be an important measure and will also be documented on every visit to the orchard. So last but not least, I would like to thank the ARC and Hortgrow for making the funding available for this project and for Prof. Karen Tron from Stellenbosch University for her collaboration.